I need a raise. I deserve a raise, but I have to admit I'm afraid to ask for one, not only because of what the boss might say, but because of what the people in the office will say, too. They might think I'm kissing up or trying to be better than them, you know? Fear of what other people may think or say about you often blocks opportunities. The action cure is to first make sure that what you plan to do is right and justified, and if you feel sure it is, then go ahead with it. Don't get hung up on what other people might think. No one ever does anything worthwhile for which he or she is not criticized somewhere along the road. These are just a few examples, but the procedure to cure fear and win confidence can be summed up in two stages. First, isolate your fear. Pin it down. Determine exactly what you're afraid of. Second, take action. There is some kind of action that will cure any and every kind of fear. Now remember this. Action is more than just a cure for fear. Action is a tool for success. Action is a confidence builder and a self Self-belief builder. Action, making things happen, is what separates a dreamer from a doer. Now, it's good to dream. Many good and useful ideas come from dreaming. But ideas without action are like a car without an engine. In other words, they're useless. Our minds generate lots of ideas every day. Ideas about different things. It will help your success plan if you get in the habit of capturing those ideas when they happen. Carry around a notebook or some small cards so you can make a note of your ideas ideas and keep those ideas in an active accessible file that can be anything from a fancy cabinet to a shoebox but make sure they're in a place where you can easily get to them and look at them frequently review your ideas and cull out the ones that don't have any value but the ones that look feasible hang on to them research them read everything you can that pertains to your idea talk it over with your friends your family fellow workers polish your ideas think and dream about them and then act on them. Remember, excellent ideas alone are not enough. A fair idea developed and acted upon is 100% better than a great idea that dies because it isn't followed up. Remember the first experiment in your people laboratory? We suggested that you pick two successful people and two unsuccessful people and see how the attributes that David Schwartz describes fit those individuals. Well, think about that experiment again and see how this model applies. People tend to fall into two general categories. Successful people are active. They take action, get things done, follow through on ideas and plans. Unsuccessful people tend to be more passive. They are donters. They postpone doing things until they can prove to themselves that they shouldn't do them or can't do them anyway. For purposes of this example, we'll call the active person Mr. A and the passive person Mr. P. Now let's examine some typical Mr. A and Mr. P behaviors. In countless ways, large and small, the differences between Mr. A and Mr. P show through. An employee at work does a particularly good job on a tough assignment, and Mr. A decides to write him a note to congratulate him on his achievement. As as soon as he makes that decision, Mr. A sits down, writes the note, and has it delivered. Mr. P decides to write a note too, but he has some other things to do right now, so he doesn't get to it right away. And then he forgets for a day or two, and the note, in fact, never gets written. Mr. A, at the age of 45, decides he wants to go into a new line of work. He researches the field he's interested in, decides on a course of action by formulating a plan for success, and he follows through, step by step. In two years, he's on a new career course and he's glad he made the change. Mr. P, at the same age, also gets the idea that he'd like to try something new, but he sits down and thinks it over and decides that it's better not to rock the boat at his age because if he failed, he'd be too old to make a comeback. Mr. A gets the things done that he wants to do, and as a byproduct, he gains confidence. He gets a feeling of inner security, self-reliance, and he also earns more income. Mr. P is afraid to act. He doesn't do the things that he wants to do. He limits his possibilities by convincing himself of the folly of action. As byproducts, he loses confidence in himself, becomes negative about life, and he lives in mediocrity. There, there is a saying that says, experience is priceless. It's a shame you have to pay for it with your youth. To become experienced, it's going to cost you your entire youth. It, the only way to get experience, you got to get old. I know you don't want to, but old is the goal. I tell people all the time, kids come up and they go, man, Mr. Harvey, you old. Old is the goal. See, if you stop getting old, 
the day you stop getting old, <laughs> you're gonna die. You're gonna die. It's over. It's over for you. See, I like getting old, because that means I'm still here. So, it's so many things to that question, but there is a balance. You have to have a good time, you have to do your work. You know, and then parents can tell you this, it's not just school work. Kids can't just do school work. You gotta give them some time to enjoy themselves. You know, you gotta give them time to be a kid. You, know, you gotta let them, you gotta let them go do something. I know, be focused, be focused, be focused, be focused, be focused, focus, 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 focus. Hey man, hey yo. They just want to go outside. They, they want to do something fun. Now, fun over here is way different from fun in the United States. So, just, I don't know what that is, but they just want to have fun. You got to create a balance. So, like with all my kids, my youngest child now is 22 years old. So, I don't have to watch them. Yes, I do. So I, do. I still watch them. Yes, but they're not. They can all drive, they all got cars, they all have their own apartment, they're independent, they all have jobs. I'm very fortunate. All my children have to be, you know, I put seven kids through college. You know why? Because I, because I flunked out of school. I flunked out of school. I failed in school. I was expelled from school and couldn't go back. I was not a good student. And so I didn't want my children to have to suffer the way I suffered with no education. See, and then sometimes my kids would go, well, Dad, look how your life turned out. You didn't have an education. Look at your life. Yeah, but you ain't got no jokes. <laughs> See, my life turned out okay because God had given me this incredible gift. I have the ability to make people I've never met laugh. So I have a gift. You don't have this gift. You need education. You got to get educated. So all of my children have gone to college. And that's been a very proud thing for me. But I had to learn to let them have fun too. So you know, we go on family vacations and things like that. And we try to sit around and have family time. You know, we try to eat some meals together. Like I have one, two, two of them here with me. This my son is with me all the time. I don't know where my daughter is. She's with their mama. I don't know. My son. He's going to come with his father because he loves me. <laughs> Robert Stephen Harvey Jr., I named him after me. That was my firstborn son. I have three sons. <laughs> and he's a very good son. A lot of beautiful women over here, but he knows. <laughs> he don't do nothing over here. We go at home. <laughs> the Muslim men over here, they're not playing. They're not playing. There's no game with them. These Muslim men over here, they love their daughters, don't play. So, we go at home. <laughs> we'll go somewhere else, we're not, not, not in here. No, look, just, this is a real simple answer. To create the balance, you just gotta take some time out to do some stuff you enjoy doing. Now look, my enjoyment is probably very different from yours. So don't do what Steve do. My enjoyment is very different. But you have to find the things that you like. You got beautiful beaches here, go to the beach. Do something other than work. Because man, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. You cannot work all the time. You have to do something for enjoyment. You got to. Why are you making money? Go buy yourself your favorite food and go eat it on the beach. Go get yourself, just sit down somewhere. You can't, I have to look where I am, so. Yeah, just buy yourself some meat and sit on the beach. Just, just do that. We trying to find a cigar and all that, that ain't gonna happen. Not here. I know I tried. <laughs> but you know, that's another thing, you know, because I'm a cigar guy. And when I come here, that's not the case. But I'm fine, so I'm, I learned how to do it with it. These other, we have laws. You have to be respectful of people's culture, country, so it's fine. 